Good afternoon, everyone, all my friends, everyone that subscribed. I want to thank everybody for subscribing. And um, just to let you guys know, I'm not making any money with this. Um, I just like to show people and, you know, how to draw. And I'm not a professional artist, but um, I... Um, <clears throat> I was there, trust me, like way, way back that I had nobody to teach me. So, and uh, that's my gift, you know, to show a lot of young people how to draw. Unfortunately, my, my channel is basically targeted on 18 years and older and stuff. So, and um, I think I've shown you guys pretty much how everything works. Let me get my, my pencil set for a second. I don't know if you guys noticed, um, I actually posted this on my community section. And this one I got up because I fixed it up a little bit. So I got to oh, you know, post that one also. And uh, so far, the uh, I'm back on Facebook again. And I will be posting more stuff and more live video on, face, on the, my Facebook group. The one I created, How to Draw comics and characters and all that stuff. <clears throat> so not only we're going to draw today, um, I feel a little better today. Um, this morning, um, I've been having some, you know, prostate issues. I'm, I'm getting worse, guys. Trust me. My health is, like, deteriorating, and it's not getting good. And it's very painful. I had to uh, sleep in the morning with an ice pack um, and put it underneath my groin area so I could feel some type of relief because, um, unfortunately, when you get old, you start getting all these problems. And then you're having trouble urinating. And uh, so it's not easy. You know, I, um, I'm trying my best. Uh, I'm going to try, you know, certain things like maybe fasting. Uh, and I looked it up that, you know, when you're eating a lot of processed foods and sugars and sodas and especially alcohol. But I left alcohol a long, long time ago. I don't drink alcohol anymore. And... Uh, You know, like processed foods is not really good for you guys. So especially stuff that has a lot of sugar, man-made processed foods. Unfortunately, we live in a situation, uh, I guess, I don't know. Things have changed throughout so many decades that we're not eating healthy foods anymore. Um, and you're supposed to eat a lot of vegetables and fruits and all that and fiber. I also got Menomusu, uh, even though Menomusu is just to make you a little softer, um, especially when you go to the to the bathroom, but it's got fiber, so maybe that might help. So yeah, it's like very, very pain, you know, painful, and it's just terrible, people. It's just terrible. I actually advise everybody to stay away from a lot of sugar drinks, especially when you get to my age. See, this problem started when I was like, I would say um, 30 years old. I started getting prostate problems and kidney problems. Um, and I know it's a very hard topic to talk about, especially hemorrhoids. That's another problem that people have to, uh, you know, the stuff people eat, uh, certain things that you eat that actually causes bad hemorrhoids. So, yeah, so I, w I went through a lot of stuff this month with both things. Um, so I'm trying to eat better. I'm trying to take good care of myself. Um, and I'm going to try to fast. So what we're going to do is today, guys, um, we're going to, um, and I know 
I'm going to see, you know, I'm going to show you pretty much how everything is done. But at the same time, I want to talk about certain topics. Topics uh, of what's happening recently. And hopefully YouTube don't act stupid and try to uh, block me because uh, people want to know. A lot of people, especially me, especially when we're talking about unidentified objects flying up in the sky. And then we make the decision to, I'm not going to say the word, bring it down in a very harsh way. So, <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys remember, remember like way, way back, there was like, um, uh, there was a mysterious object that was actually messing around with our fighter, you know, our pilot's mind, you know. And they were pretty fast. They were actually losing our jet fighters. And people actually considered them as I identify objects, uh, which is UFOs. Now, I know many of you already know that I'm a skeptic. Um, not, a, not a skeptic. I'm atheist. But at the same time, I'm a little, get, a little bit skeptic. Like, you know, um, I want to find out if it's really true, if it really works, whether it's something phenomenon, spiritual, whatever, all this bungle mungle stuff that's out there that's kind of hard to believe in. I got members of my family that actually believe in all this nonsense about spirits and all this stuff. But I'm atheist. I want to know proof if it does exist. If there is some type of life after death which I already experienced my life after death. My heart stopped two times and <clears throat> I didn't see anything. So um, some people see things and it could be that maybe our brains actually play tricks. Like sometimes, you, you know, when you think about something a lot or you start having um, afterlife experiences, thinking of the things you believe in like like for example everybody has their own religious beliefs and then every person that dies or they actually see some type of life after death or whatever so you know they see something something that um that you can't explain you know in the afterlife my case is that i didn't see anything I, it's just like everything turned black um the way I see it, for example, if you're like, for you know, sometimes when you dream, right? You know, when you go in some type of state of dream, when you go when you're dreaming, you're sleeping, you're right here, you're ready to sleep, and all of a sudden you're you actually pass out. But during that time that you pass out, you don't know what time you passed out from the beginning, right? So you're in some some type of state of mind that your mind kind of you don't know who you are at the same time. It's like you're, you're, you actually fall into a dream, but in that moment that you fall into the dream, you don't know when you passed out, this and that. And then you actually forget who you are sometimes in a dream. And then you start <clears throat> dreaming another dream. Like <clears throat> your mind starts playing with you like, it takes you maybe to Wonderland, another world, and you're dreaming that you're in another world. And trust me, I've had so many bizarre dreams that it's incredible, it's hard to explain. And sometimes it's always good to write down um, every dream that you have, you know, write down and analyze it. And then when you analyze it, well, maybe it's because I was thinking of something like last week. Like there are times like, we could actually have a, um, a thinking, like, for example, we may be in our job or, you know, and we look at a girl, a woman that, wow, she's beautiful, that she's, uh, you know, and we start thinking about her a lot, right? So, and maybe two weeks after, you have a dream that you're having dinner with her. So, yeah, your, your mind, trust me, it, it's like a machine, a computer that actually, everything that we capture we actually um you know like it's like we create our world our, our our brain is like a computer and believe it or not when we have these dreams we create our own world and this and that 
But in the beginning process, when you fall asleep, that's like it's never lands. It's like you're you're nothing there. You don't exist until your brain cells start to um, try to help you memorize a little bit of who you are. And sometimes you have dreams that you're a different person sometimes that you don't know that you existed. And here is when you're alive, right? So in the state of dream, when I when my heart stopped uh, two times and uh, they brought me back with CPR and uh, electric shock, and then trust me, my ribs were broken when they gave me all these um, maneuvers, you know, uh, CPR on my chest. So I was in this state right here. It's like I did not exist. And since I did not exist, it's like I couldn't remember when I when I went out, when I had the heart attack, that my heart stopped. I couldn't remember when it happened. When I came back to life, let's just say I came back here, it was just a few minutes that I was gone, completely gone, right? When I came back, That's when I, my mind starts saying, what happened to me? I didn't go to a, a, it's like I blocked out. I was like, for a few minutes, I did not exist. That's what death is. You actually are in this, in this level right here when it comes to death. And it, the proof is that, you know, they the, did a lot of search and they've asked many people, do you remember when you were in your mother's wound, when you were a baby? in your mother's wound, you know, when you were a baby, and I say, this is the baby here. And I mean, nobody remembers one single detail when they're in their in the mother's wound. wound. That's because that's the beginning of process and the beginning of life right there. Do you understand now? That's why I'm hardcore atheist, because it's kind of hard to believe in the afterlife. Now, um, let's go on. We're going to practice a little bit of what we're going to do. And we're going to talk about um, the thing about this, you know, strange object that fell down, um, especially the second one. So I, I know many of you guys probably remember, and we've had discussion before, but I deleted it. But I think it's a very important discussion about um, if there's out life out there or whatever. You know, but show me proof. Show me proof because sometimes our governments don't tell us a lot of, you know, a lot of things about if there's aliens out there that exist and stuff. So, um, is there any proof that there are aliens out there that exist? That's what I want to know. So, I am willing to bet you. And let's let's go back way way back when they had these pilots that actually they encounter you know encounter I don't know if I'm saying it right um, these strange objects that were actually were so fast they even checked it in the monitor in the uh, in the the U.S. Navy actually checked the monitor and they were really they were really fast these strange objects you know <clears throat> they actually uh, consider them objects that were not made man that came from another origin. It could be, you know, from another planet or something. You know, then again, there could be a country out there that could actually create these things. You never know. But um, so far, <clears throat> and when I saw that interview, <clears throat> it's an object that never was from the Chinese. Nobody actually claimed it. Um, so... And what's really amazing about these um, these UFOs or whatever identify, because that's what it is. A UFO is like, you know, identify flying object. So they had no idea where it came from. You know what I mean? So and then it actually disappears in the sea and they actually got lost in, in you know, in the United States radar and stuff. So. So. Um, and I remember that the, uh, the, the pilot was describing that it was sort of like a tic-tac shape, a tic-tac shape, and they, don't, they didn't know what it was. 
but it was very advanced. So when it was very advanced, um, uh, you know, it kind of like uh, shocked, you know, it was like, I think it was like three pilots that actually saw it. So, um, they just couldn't make what the hell it was. They couldn't make out what it was. So going back now to this situation, and we all know about the, you know, the incident about the balloons that they actually took it down. And then now they have another object that they took out. Very, very strange is that they could actually tell us about the first object, right? But they can't tell us too much about the second object. And they won't admit and they won't tell us if it's a, if it's a Chinese origin or, or from another country origin or something. So I really believe and... I think that this second object that they took down could be the same uh, object that many of these pilots were actually were identifying as a, um, a UFO way, way back. So they saw it still, so they took the opportunity to take it down. But the funny thing is that when the reporters, and I was looking, trust me, I'm, I'm always looking at everything, people, trust me. The funny thing is uh, that the reporters were ask, asking questions. Um, have they identified where it came from? What origin was the second object from? The major was actually stirring, kind of like not giving too much information about it. It was really funny that I was just dying laughing. I, I, I know this has got to be a joke, you know, people. It's like you have the reporters asking the same every reporter they were basically they, they weren't even talking about so much about the um the earthquake that was happening in uh in turkey they were actually asking more about the second object that and i am so and i'm willing to bet you that many of these reporters were actually thinking about shit could it be a ufo that they actually took down you know i don't want to use the other word which i know you guys um i'm just going to say take down or just bring down because unfortunately everything gets censored. So, you know, it's kind of funny that they actually were actually steering the, the reporters on another direction and they were all concerned about the sex, you know, the second object. Was it a UFO that they actually took down? Now, it could be that maybe it was a UFO and they won't tell us. Now, the reason why they won't tell us is because of this. And I'm going to tell you why. They are, they're afraid that if the pub public finds out that this was some type of UFO from another planet, then the public is going to start worrying. And the reason why the public, and I'm talking about the general public, they're going to start worrying about that. This could be uh, probably a future invasion by these origin aliens. Who knows? If, if, if it came to the point. So they don't want to panic the people. So I know how government works because I've seen so many movies that has to do with government. Um, I don't know if you guys ever seen the movie. And I really advise everybody to watch that. It's really good. It's called Three Days to the Condor. In this movie, you're going to find out there's like two... CIAs in, in the government and one is really corrupted and they actually um, in the movie Robert Refford did an excellent acting and what's her name um, she's in the movie also um, Faye Dunaway now in this movie it was so awesome because what happened was that Robert Refford read a lot he worked for the government it was like a, some type of agency that was working for the government and something came across in the agency, a message that came, it was a top secret code from the government that they were keeping that, you know, from, and they actually use some type of code, like I would say, uh, a story code, a code. And then in the movie, Robert Redford got that message, but he had no idea what it was until little by little, when he started seeing all his people getting killed, because um, I think in, in the beginning of the movie, he goes, well, anyway, I'm not going to tell you. 
Just watch the movie. It's called Three Dates to the Condor. It's with I have it. It's a great movie. It's um it's one of my favorite movies that has to do with espionage. One great movie you guys got to see also the spy that came from the cold. Um, that's also about espionage. Um, with um, what's his name, uh, Richard Button. I like his accent. He has this cool accent, Richard Burton. Very good actor. So anyway, you can learn a lot. Trust me, believe it or not, guys. You can learn a lot from movies because movies will actually tell you all kinds of shit that our government may be hiding. Now, going back to this flying object that they saw, I, mark my words, they're going to keep that a secret. And I told you the reason why. They're going to keep it a secret because they don't want to actually panic um, the general public or the world, that they actually took down something that may be alien origin. And then once these other alien origins find out that we actually took some of their, you know, uh, aliens down, whatever you want to call it, then they might re retire. How, how would you say that word? It's called oh, retaliate. Yeah, I can't have him. My grammar is really bad. So... There's always something going on. If it's not the Ukrainian thing with the uh, with the Russians, and I already know what that's all about, which I don't even want to talk about because there's that's, that's a lot of lies there too. So, you know, <clears throat> they're they're gonna keep the they're gonna keep it a secret. Um, they won't tell us pretty much what's going on with this the second flying object that they actually took down. So, so um, we're gonna be like scratching our heads what did they took down and they won't tell us but you know like i said it's really funny they, they actually tell us you know the details on on the balloon that they actually took down <clears throat> and even the chinese admitted that it came from them but the second object nobody claimed it that's that's what the the issue here that i'm trying to figure out um if it's alien re uh, an origin or if it's something, and like I said, I'm atheist, but at the same time, I'm a skeptic. I want to know, you know, what the hell is going on, why people see things or why people see spirits or this and that. Now, look, one time when I was in, um, in when I used to live in Miami Beach way, way back and I was patrolling because um, I've always worked as in security for a you know, very, very long time. So, uh, one time, um, I remember that, uh, even there was several people actually saw it with me. We saw some strange, very, very bright orbs and it wasn't a, a drone cause I know how the drone looks like. And I remember that me and this guy, he was a Haitian guy. He was actually repeating pretty much what I was, I was pretty much repeating this object and there was two of them that was flying really high in the sky and then <clears throat> we were you know repeating to ourselves hey it has no sound there's no sound and it's just there in the sky whatever there's no sound no nothing and it was like i would say like maybe two story buildings high it was pretty close believe it or not not to mention my my friend um uh, Gloria, she actually saw, um, no, not Gloria, sorry, Sylvia, who was a good friend of mine. Uh, she actually saw two beautiful orbs with different lights coming from the, from the, the horizontal part of the sea. It was like rising. She actually thought that it came from the sea. Um, there, there were also, uh, um, a lot of, um, you know, um, investigations that many of these flying orbs, actually, they just hide in the sea. They, you know, their origin is probably in the sea. And um, that these uh, flying objects, uh, how do you call it? They come in numbers, you know? Um, so, so that's what I'm really concerned about that 
what our government is actually hiding from us. So, you know, they're always hiding something. Trust me. They've, they've hidden a lot of stuff, especially in World War II. You know, they've, uh, there's a lot of um, documentaries that I've seen that they actually use German Nazi scientists uh, to do their um, things here in the United States. And that was like after. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff. Um, so it could be that um, these flying, ion, you know, identifying flying objects come probably maybe they existed for a very, very long time. People have seen these things. Now, when I saw this in, in Miami, and I don't want people to think that I'm crazy because several people actually saw it with me. At that time, I had one of these stupid Mickey Mouse government phones that couldn't even take. I should have, if I had like the phone I had now, I would have taken a picture of it. And then I would actually would say, whoa, maybe it was a, a UFO and stuff. So, so we just don't know, you know, we don't, we don't know. All right. Anyway, let's uh, change a little bit the topic and I want to show you pretty much what I've done here. What I started here is uh, we started off with a circle, basic circle. And uh, this is something I saw from you too, but I changed it like always. I'm always, I'm sort of like a scientist. I'm trying to figure out how to draw it better, make it more better to understand, whatever. So I did like a sort of like a tapered line, which is the shape of the, the whole head, right? Remember, if you look at a head, it's something like, a, like an oval shape, right? Um, but it's kind of tapered in, right? So that's the same thing that I did here, right? And then um, what I did was I did two lines, uh, one line on this side and one line on this side, which is going to be the side of the face, of course. And then I started shaping it little by little. And then I did cheek lines right here. Now, sometimes, you know, Loomis does stuff like this, but Loomis, you know, on uh, some of his um, segments, he actually starts, you know, with the center of the face sometimes, or he'll start doing the shape, you know, once he starts slicing the circle. There was a guy that actually um, um, gave me a comment saying, well, from the circle, that's when you start doing the details. No, no, no. It's more than that, people. When you're doing the circle technique, you have to figure out the shape of the face. The, 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 the technique of slicing off the circle Everything, and I, like I mentioned before, that when you're using the Loomis method, it might look the same, but remember, there's going to be changes because not every face is the same. Everybody's face is different. So the Loomis method is just to help you figure out the science of how the people look, whether they have a big nose or a big mouth or, you know, big lips, you know, or big eyebrows, whatever. Um... And of course, it's going to change when you use the Loomis method, okay? So, and the one that explains this very well is um, uh, Abdon J. Romero. He explains it very well when he starts making the heads and the faces and stuff. So, all right, so going back to this drawing right here, as you can see, I'm doing half. So that way you can see the process over here. And uh, of course, yeah. You know, you, you're going to do the details, but you're going to construct the face. You're going to construct the face that you need to, to, to see. Okay, so here's the chin, and this is the mouth right here. All right, and then the neck. Remember that the man's neck is a little bit thicker. If this would have been a woman, of course, remember, the woman's neck is in the same level where the corner of the eyes. Okay, so... We did this method right here, and now we're going to try this one right here. Um, this one is a little bit complicating, but I actually figured it out. And I'm going to show you slowly how you do this. And as I'm doing this, um, all you have to do is look at the way I do it. But I still want to talk about the talk, you know, the topic about the flying objects. And, uh, so, like I said, it's funny that they actually uh, find out the, you know, the first object, which is the balloons they took down, right? But they can't tell us, okay? And, and our governments know they're very advanced to find out anything. How come they're not telling us uh, about the sec you know, second object? 
that's something that, you know, that's kind of like really troubling me. Like, why are they not telling us about the second um, object? So my conclusion is that it could be alien related. It could be something that's not from this planet. And uh, believe it or not, there were a lot of, you know, a lot of investigations, you know, UFO investigations about flying objects that they actually admit that it doesn't come from this origin of planet of ours. It comes probably something more advanced from another planet. Now, going back to the threat or, you know, not telling the public what's really going on. Well, um, if, if it's, if it's, if it's, I think what it is, oh, my grammar is really bad. All right. If I think what it could be, it might be, then that means we're in trouble. Because I just hope if it is something alien related, I just hope they do not start to retaliate. Um, because if it is alien related, then this could be a big problem. You know, so that I think that's why they're not telling the public or these reporters that they're actually going crazy asking the general. But, you know, the reporters should know, and I already know, that the government is not going to tell us the truth. So they're just wasting their time. What people should do is start investigating themselves. You know, that's what they got to do. And I am willing to bet you that people are going to start investigating. And I'm not talking about governments. I'm talking about regular people, you know, UFO hunters or people that actually believe in these things. Like I said, I'm atheist, but at the same time, I'm a skeptic. I, I definitely want to know if there's something out there that exists. Okay, going back to drawing now. Um, as you can see, I did a box shape, right? But I did, you know, the, um, the segments a little higher because that's going to be sort of like the Loomis method. The, um, the Loomis method, the, this, is, this will be where the eyes are going to be set. And then I did a ball shape that's for the cranium and right here would be the jaw right here inside the box shape. So as you can see, I started the box shape, I did the grid lines, and then I did the shape of the head, which is a circle and then the jaw. So all I got to do now is um, figure out the planes. I'm going to see if I can get this right like that. Sort of like visual, you know, vi it's all visual effect. Like I would probably see it more like... Um, if anything, you know, like the Hogarth method, kind of, you know, there's a grid line here and right here is a cheek line. And then this is the side of the face right here and stuff right here. And this is the jaw right there. Okay. So, yeah, um, it's a big mystery, you know, I mean, I've, I'm, I, I love, you know, science fiction. And uh, even though I'm atheist, but I love science fiction. And we all want to know. We all want to know, are we alone? And it's just kind of hard. It's kind of hard to believe that there's so many planets out there. And they already found, NASA have found evidence that there are planets out there. There's, there's life out there. There's something else out there that, that's, you know, it's just hard to believe that we're the only ones in the universe in this big, immense galaxy. And they want to fool us, you know. They want to fool, unless maybe NASA has been lying to us for the, for, for ages, but I don't think so. Because if you look up in the sky, you're going to see stars. And when you look at these stars, these are planets. These are planets, you know, galaxies, this and that, uh, that we can't see. Now, unfortunately, whatever created all this, you know, was a mastermind because you know he created us in this lonely planet that we don't even know our neighbors from other planets from another universe and each of these universes got you know pretty much the same um system like our universe so it's just hard to believe that we are alone in this universe or in the galaxy or something like that all right guys let's let's do the, the profile here um, we're going to start with uh, the circle and we're going to do the segments. And these segments are for the eyebrow line, the nose line, and the chin line. And then after that, 
that's when um, this I saw this the only problem with this method and let me explain this before I go on the guy did the line right like with a circle like halfway it kind of like if like using the uh the Loomis method I didn't like the way he did it so I did it this way better more easier to understand so let's work with this one after I do the, the segments for the nose and the chin, that's when I do the tempo line right here. And right away, and like I keep explaining to you guys, train your eye to see every part of the anatomy. Okay, train your eye to see where this goes, where this goes, where you see the ear line over here. And then you do the framing of the nose and then the ears, okay? Then we're going to work with this one later on. So for, first, let's let's do this one, and then let's go back to our friendly neighborhood alien from another planet that they actually, most likely, they took down. So yeah, this is what's going to happen. So you know, this this issue is not just going to actually uh, go under the carpet like our government's trying to keep everything under the carpet for so many years and stuff. Um, people are going to be concerned. What was it that they actually took down? Was it something from another planet? Was it something from another origin country? Um, and like I said, and I know I keep mentioning it, and the reason why I keep mentioning it is because, you know, it's troubling because nobody claims it. Nobody claims what it was. Not the Chinese or the Russians. So, yeah. Um, what was this object they took down? Uh, and I know half of those reporters that were asking questions to the, the general, uh, they were, they were really concerned. They want to know what was it? Because this could be a national, uh, crisis, meaning this can actually cause a lot of problems. Meaning that if it was alien related, this can cause big problems. Yeah. So you just never know, people, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, I've seen a lot of UFO movies, like my favorite one was um, uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind was one of my favorite ones. And you just never know um, if, if they do exist. Let's just say, let's just say if they do exist. Um, I don't think they want nothing to do with us. And I think if with this act that we just did, the United States did, supposedly if it's true it could be alien related then this is going to actually um cause more friction in a way or they were actually i could imagine um they have their own world and they'll probably say these humans are evil or you know they are you just never know what they might be thinking you just never know so um, in their own origin or language, you know, so, and it's true. I mean, if, if anything, look at the way we live, we hate each other. We can't even get along with each other. You know, we're always causing wars with one another. I mean, if, supposedly if they do exist, do you think they want, you know, they want to do, uh, you know, make peace with us the way our nature is the nature of hating each other. We don't love each other as brotherly as, uh, you know, as we should. We don't get along with each other. Uh, at the same time, we don't understand each other. Um, even in families, we don't even understand each other. I mean, my brother doesn't even understand me. We don't even get along sometimes. So it, it is what it is. We don't know if these, these, uh, um, these, uh, beings, that live, you know, in another planet, who knows, they have a different world, a different way of living. We don't know that. Maybe that's why they're so advanced, because they're probably so advanced that they probably don't even think of war like we do. And we got a, a very, very long way to go, people, trust me. Um, so, you know, I could be wrong. Maybe it's not alien uh, related. It could be something from a, another country that maybe they were doing some type of experiment. Um, um, but 
I don't know. You know, it just, you know, the whole fact of, of the history, and they already did some research about it. And they actually, it was in 60 minutes, they, they were actually talking about it. Now, two jet, two pilots were actually talking about that they actually saw a tic tac shape saucer, whatever it was, that were actually losing our jet planes. So we just don't know, you know, we just can't say that it was alien re related, you know, and, uh, but the thing that troubles me the, the most is that they can find out the first object, which is the balloons that they actually took down, but they can't tell us so much about the second origin, the, the second object. And if it's true, that they say that these uh, crafts actually live underneath the sea and then we can't detect it because they actually get lost in our radars. So it could be possible that when maybe when they took it down, it probably went back to its mothership, who knows, underneath the sea. So yeah, there's a lot of things out there, people. It's just, you know, that um, we got to um, investigate. We just don't know. Um, if it's an alien craft they took down, we just don't know. And I love, you know, I love, uh, all these mysteries. Uh, I actually have like so many play, I have like a playlist that actually basically about the mysteries of the universe and all that. I love all that stuff. I just love it because I mean, this is something that, um, our minds, I mean, you know, we're so curious to find out if we're alone out there. The other day I saw something else that NASA detected a planet that looks kind of like ours. But of course, it's going to take billions of years to actually go to that planet. It's only by the, um, the satellites that actually detect these planets that they do exist. Um, um, and it might be life. And these planets you just never know you know you know when you look at these movies you know hollywood actually and that's the thing about hollywood that you can actually learn a lot of things about Hollywood, like the movie superman you never know there might be some superhuman being out there kind of like us but they're more advanced who knows or you know battlestar galactica all that kind of stuff it may be out there you know in a galaxy, galaxy far away from here, you know? So, yeah. You know, my f favorite of them all was Star Wars. Star Wars actually really blew my mind. So, yeah, it's like, um, you just never know, man. Just never know. Okay, so pretty much what you see here, what I did, is um, I did it here. Uh, even though I was talking about the topics, but I, I'm trying to make sure that you guys understand what I'm doing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start doing the box shape. And I'm going to show you, because some people have trouble doing the box shape. I'm going to show you an easier way how to do a box shape uh, this way, which is more easier. So when I do a box shape, I'm going back through time thinking about, I would say, Serpino. Remember, I, you guys seen, and I actually posted some videos on Serpino. That Serpino uh, use this method. This would be the eyebrow line, the nose right here, and then here would be the chin. So, um, Serpino, what he does is he does a hint of sort of like the box shape. And I'm going to show you, there's a lot of box shape tech, like this one also is really cool that you, you guys might like, which I actually posted. And uh, I'm going to show you how that's done also. So we're visualizing, we're training our eye, and make sure it's level, you know, it's even on both sides. All right, so we're visualizing sort of like a box shape right there. And uh, when we're visualizing the box shape, um we're visually you know we're seeing the eye line here right 
and then we're going to actually indicate where the eyes are. So I always start from the center of the vertical line right there. That would be my eyes right there. Okay. Once I have that, yeah, I'm going to actually, you know, show you that this is three parts. Remember, this is three parts. So all I got to do is, you know, very carefully, if I want, I can do the eyes, you know, a little hint of the eye right there. This will be the nose right there. Okay, right here would be the mouth. Automatically, the chin, I'm going to see it right here. Okay, so it's sort, of like, it's like, sort of like I'm, you know, training my eye to see a little bit of everything, you know. Then the, the cheek line would be here, right here. Just remember where the line is, okay? After I do that, what I'm going to do is actually see everything start taking form. So I'm going to make sort of like if I was doing a mask, but I'm doing the shape of the face. But remember that here is going to be the hairline. So you're going to probably add, you know, of course, and don't forget the temple because that's going to help you out also the temple. Okay, and you're going to actually visualize little by little, you know, the face. And then you're going to taper in right here. You're going to taper in and see how little by little, you know, it's actually forming. And that's it. And then don't forget, this, will, this is going to be the hairline right here. This will be the top of the hair. And then after that, you can do the hair, the outline of the hair right here, or just do a simple, you know, half oval shape to, to do the form of the head, right? And then do the hair, see? See how simple it is? Just by doing the, the Serpino technique, but transforming it into a box shape. And a lot of people have trouble doing the box shape method, but it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, you know, rocket scientist to figure this out because you're working as a scientist to figure out where the milk and crannies go. And I'm just going to do half of the face so you can see pretty much, you know, how this is done. So this would be right here, the bridge of the nose. And then right here would be the center of the nose. This would be the, uh, the nose. This would be the nostrils and this will be the filter of the nose and then here would be the mouth wow it's amazing it's pretty quiet out there there's hardly any sound whatsoever i love it like this i love peace and quiet you know then not only that i get to do my tutorials in peace and quiet you know no noise whatsoever even the dogs decided to just actually give me a break Okay, so this could be a Superman character or Aquaman, whoever you guys want to create, you know, whatever, you know, comes to your mind, right? So wouldn't it be cool if we ever find out, which I doubt it, going back to the, uh, the mysterious object they took down. It would be so cool if we actually found out that it was alien origin, but we got to worry. We got to worry because they might retaliate, you know, try to, uh, you know, do some type of invasion that we took down one of their, you know, friendly neighborhood aliens that were just lurking around, you know, who knows, saying hello to our pilots, whatever. But like I said, our human nature, we don't understand what's out there and we never will. And that's why we, we, this, we, there's no progress. There's no progress. I mean, people hate each other, you know, race against race, you know, we'll never learn. And, uh, maybe we could learn if they do exist, maybe we could learn a lot from these beings, you know, maybe they're peaceful beings. You never know. So, 
Um, okay, what we're going to do here, guys, we're going to do this one. We're going to do the ball shape. And it's sort of like the Loomis method, but this takes two approaches. And I started experimenting two ways. Um, even though this comes from somebody else, but I did it my way. I started experimenting this way right here. And then I, uh, I think this one would be a little bit better. So we're going to try this one first, uh, the way he did it, even though I did do some changes on this one. But this one, I definitely did some changes. Now, remember, you can start drawing the features by doing the eyes first, or you can start with the eyebrows first, or you can start like the Loomis and Romero actually does it that they start with the nose. OK, so let's do this one first. Um, we're going to actually visualize. I'm going to do a head from like always. I'm always doing this from my head. Oh, this is from my head. So um, I don't have any reference. I asked Romero to send me some some pictures uh, that he has, stuff that he doesn't use for magazines. Unfortunately, um, it's hard to find magazines now and nowadays uh, because everything is in the Internet. And I need, you know, reference of faces and stuff like that in order to get really good. But since I've been drawing for a long time, I already have an idea what I'm doing. So, all right. So right here would be, I'm going to visualize the center of the vertical line, which is going to be the center of the face. This is going to be my eyebrow line, like always, the Loomis method. Then I'm going to bring it down a little bit curved in, a little bit tapered in, not too much, you know. I could always make it straight if I want, but not too, not too far in. Uh, right here, I'm going to visualize three shapes. Remember, one, two, three shapes, which right here is the nose line. Right here is the hairline. So we got one, two, and three. And this will be here, uh, the chin right here. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to visualize the side of the face. I'm going to train my eye to see the side of the face, which is going to be on this side. And then from there on, I'm going to visualize that oval, that ellipse, which is going to be the side of the head. Okay. Now, the guy that I saw on YouTube, which is actually, and I hate time lapse. Oh my God, I hate time lapse. I had to like slow the video to figure it out. Even though, you know, um, he was a good artist and everything, but, you know, I hate time lapse. I can't stand it because you won't be able to understand uh, time lapse. Um, so um, he didn't do what I did. I actually marked off with that where that circle is going to start. So it's always good to start it off right here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is um, he started working with the eyebrows here. First, he did the jaw and then he did the ears and then he did the eyebrows. As you can see, I numbered them. <clears throat> now, I'm going to leave it like this because in case I want to, you know, experiment doing it this way. But I'm showing you the way he did it, even though I did some changes. Now I'm going to do it the way I did it. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing visualizing where that ear line is going to be at. Then I'm going to visualize where my jaw is going to be at. My jaw is going to be right here underneath the ear line right here. If I want, I could do the mouth line here. That is actually going to help me figure out where things go. Let me uh, because my, my nasal and I had the, uh, unfortunately, my brother was here today. So the uh, air conditioning was All right, I had to uh, spray some Afrin because I'm having sinus problems, which is terrible. 
All right, so, okay, here's my jaw right here. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the ears now. So the ears would be where the length of where the nose is. So I'm going to have to bring this a little higher. It's always going to be a mistake, but don't worry about it. Don't let that panic you and stuff. So um, what I'm going to do now is do a, uh, actually the bridge of the nose and the outline of the nose. Then I'm going to do the eye line right here. Okay. I think that's more better to understand. Once I have that nose, I'm going to visualize the corner of the eye here, which is the corner, the sort of like the, uh, the bone structure of the corner of the eye. So that would be right here. Okay. So far, so good. So all I got to do now is start working with the features. So this is, like I said, sort of like the Loomis method. And this would be, let me see something. Okay, this will be the shape of the head here. Because sometimes you have to slice some part. Let me try something new here. Hold on. Because remember, the circle on the side here sometimes is slice just a little bit. There. There you go. And this would be the contour of the side of the face right here. If I want, I can do pretty much like the Loomis method that he does a line here, then another line here. And this would be the filter of the nose and the mouth right there. And then a triangle method actually helps out where my mouth is going to be set. And here's the, um, and here's the chin right there. So this works if you make it work, you know what I mean? If you make this work, it might work for you guys, but it takes a lot of practice. I mean, every, remember, um, <clears throat> you can use this technique and change it so many ways, but when you change it, just make sure you make it work. That's all. Then right here would be the eye. If you want, you can scribble in this side right here, the eye socket and then scribble. Now I'm not going to get into so many details. Okay. Now let's try it the way he did it. And we'll do it right here. And maybe now let's hold on. Let's just cause, um, let's just put this here. Maybe we'll do, let's just have an imagination here. <clears throat> we'll do an alien, maybe the alien they're act that's actually drowning in the Alaska uh, sea right now. Who knows? That they actually took down. Yeah, people, I'm, I'm beginning to think that they're not going to tell us what really happened to the second object or the, the details of that object. I don't think they're going to tell us. Um... And if they don't tell us, and it's still a mystery, it's because they're keeping it a secret. Because, let's just put it this way. I know how government works, and just by watching movies and this and that, you're saying, oh man, you better stop watching movies, dude. But no, you learn a lot from movies, okay? I am willing to bet you that they're going to keep the, uh, the secret. They're going to keep it a secret um, about the flying object, that they, the first the second object they took, they took down, <clears throat> they're going to keep it a secret. And, uh, and you know why? It's because they don't want people to actually panic because it may be alien origin. They're going to keep it a secret. Mark my words, they're going to keep that a secret. But anyway, we all know that our governments are a joke. And that's one of the reasons why I don't vote. Because they lie too much. And so I um I actually do my own research about a lot of things, people. So a lot of research and I actually put the pieces together. You know, my my grammar is not really perfect. Um 
But I know that you cannot trust any government in any, any part of the world. You just cannot. You got to be really stupid to actually trust your government. Because all of them, they will lie. And it is what it is. You know? All right. So we're going to do it a different way now. So let's see. Right here would be the side of the head. So I'm going to do just a hint of an oval there. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do a line there just to make it more. I could also visualize a box shape if I want. Like that. I could do that too. Yeah. Yeah, box shape is really good. Okay. So, now, I'm going to visualize the ear line right here, see? Actually, you know what? That's a good idea. I'm going to do it here. Yeah. So that way I know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. All right. Okay, so... um. What I'm going to do now is visualize where that mouth line is. That's going to actually help me do the jaw right there. So uh, I'm going to start doing the jaw. Okay. And I'm not going to do, you know, close this yet because what I, what my intentions is, is to focus really on the shape of the face on this side and then everything will start taking form. Then the ear, the ear line here that I did here, I'm going to do the ears right here, okay? Then if I want, I can do the cheek lines here, just like the Loomis method. And then over here, this would be the planes. Sort of like the George Bridgman method if I want, but very lightly. I'm not going to do it, you know, too hard or, you know, tighten the pencil or anything like that. I just don't do it lightly. So like I said, let's draw an alien. So let's say this guy has got a big head. Something. Have you guys ever seen um, the cone heads? Oh my God, that movie was hilarious. Aliens from another planet. Um, with uh, I think it was Dan Aykroyd in the movie. Uh, I got, that's one movie I definitely got to get, which is um, Cone Heads. That movie would make me, oh my God, that, that, that movie was hilarious. And then you had the, uh, the CIA, and I think it was the, um, the INS, I think, or the IRS that were actually, uh, you know, hunting down these aliens. They thought that they were aliens from another country, but they actually were. <laughs> that movie was hilarious. It was called uh, Coneheads. Okay, so now um, I'm going to do pretty much... Uh, you know, pretty much what he did um, after the jaw, the ears, and I'm going to do the eyebrows. So the eyebrows would be here, and then the other eyebrow here. So yeah, it, it works out pretty good. Then, the, you know, the bridge of the nose right here, and the outline. Oh, thank goodness. I feel a little bit better. Um, I, I guess that metal muscle actually helped me a little better. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat more fiber and uh, no more junk food. I got to take care of myself. And that's the thing. When you're having prostate issues, man, it's just it really, really messes you up. So I'm going to do maybe a cone head Amy in here. That's a funny, funny movie. Cone heads with Dan Aykroyd. And there were some other actors. And it was funny because they were in the movie. One of the, I think it was in, somebody was asking them, so where do you come from? We come from France. <laughs> Oh, uh, Dan Aykroyd, he is funny like hell, man. It's just... Okay. 
And then there was a, a funny, uh, he was a, a, a chubby guy in the movie. I forgot his name. He was, he's, he's a comedian. I guess all these comedians, um, these, in, in Coneheads were in Saturday Night. All of them starred in Saturday Night Live. Um, all of them. And uh, I know many of you already know Saturday Night Live, uh, that show. So, uh, man, that movie was hilarious. Coneheads. We come from France. Uh, that movie is really funny. I really recommend it. If you guys want to have a good laugh, that one and uh, Mars Attack was hilarious. Oh my God, that movie was hilarious. Okay, so this will be like a half human and half alien or something. So let's just um, finish it off like human-like and then we'll do something creative with this. So the eyes will be here. And I'm going to do it lightly right here. So, so far, this came out pretty good. I think it works. So now, let's transform this um, Andrew Loomis face into a alien. Let's erase some of this plane, and let's erase this, and then let's erase a little bit here, and make the structure of the nose a little bit different, and maybe we'll change the mouth a little bit. Let's make him an alien. So I'm going to start with big eyes. And since this is a three-quarter view, i got to make sure that this eye is bigger. And then this eye is a little bit smaller on this side because of the three-quarter view. And then we'll make some highlights. And then the nose will make the nostrils a little higher. We'll make more nostrils. Uh, you could be creative with this. I have a book which I haven't shown you yet. But the only problem with that book is it doesn't show you too much, you know, techniques. I mean, I could figure it out, some of the stuff. But it doesn't. it's not really a, a, a book that actually teaches you pretty much how I've been showing you guys how to do the anatomy and faces and heads. Um, let's see if we do some type of detail on the mouth or something, something creative. I'll do some more details on top of the head there. And I don't know, I've never seen an alien, but maybe, who knows, they might not have ears. And we'll do the, the structure a little bit different. So we're just coming out with something crazy here, that's all. You know, just create something here. And maybe he's a, a gray alien. We just that look at that from uh andrew loomis face to an alien ain't that incredible i'm pretty sure uh if loomis was alive today he would probably be impressed with this one i can't believe he used my method to create an alien Man. imagine loomis alive that'd be awesome it's like Elvis is still alive. Loomis is still alive. Who knows? Maybe Elvis was kidnapped by aliens. You never know. So yeah, this came out pretty cool as an alien structure of a head or something do some more details on the eyes or something something creative i'm gonna fix this a little better like more details on that nose because it just looks too flat so i want to make it you know a little bit 
I would say three dimensional or something. Yeah. All right, not bad, not bad at all. All right, guys, so, so far that came out pretty good, the technique and everything. So we did this one, we did the box shape, and then we actually experimented with this one and uh, it worked out pretty fine. All right, so let's do this one right here. Um, this one is pretty cool. And let me, uh, before we start, let me show you what I did here. But I did it a little bit different here. This is the um, the video from this British guy that he's really cool, uh, the way he did it. But I changed it a little bit. He actually made the shape of the face. But to understand it better, I did it this way. So let me show you what I did here. I did sort of like how the Serpino method is set that this is not going to be the shape of the face. This is going to be the temple part. This is the shape of the face, okay? So actually number them. One, two, the temple. Three, the nose, right? Four, the chin. Then I did a hint of the mouth here. Then five, the box shape, you see? Which is going to be the shape of the face. That's how I came with this. And we're going to do this one. And we're going to do it slowly. And let's get another piece of paper. Um, and let's go back to the... Uh, The balloon issue and the second object issue, which is fascinating to me, which is really spellbinding because I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to put all the pieces together, whether our government is going to keep that secret. We already know about the balloon thing. We already know that that was a, a Chinese balloon, but we still don't know the second object. We still don't know the second object. Okay, here's the uh, the eyebrow line, but I'm going to do the temple first. That's what I'm going to do, the temple. At the same time, I'm going to do the nose. It looks like this is really messed up because I, I think maybe it was, yeah, it's it got smudged. That's by the black pencil, that smudges. Okay, so this is the nose, and this would be the chin line right here. Now, after that, I'm going to do the box shape, which is right here. And if I want, I'm going to you know, use the, uh, the ruler. The ruler. I always remember to use the ruler, people. And then right here. Okay, now, now, I just want to make sure it's nice and level on this side, level on this side. Okay, now, I'm going to do pretty much what I did here. And this is me, this is my way, and this is the British guy's way, so I did it my way a little bit different. So, like I said, guys, I am sort of like a scientist when it comes to drawing techniques and methods. So uh, many of you already know how I work. The nose. This will be the eye line right here. Right? Now I'm going to be careful with doing this one. Bridge of the nose. I'm going to shape the nose. And then I'm going to the eyebrows right here. there and then the mouth and right here I'm just gonna you know, the filter the nose and then the mouth better always remember that when you're doing the the mouth do the filter first so you have a, a great visual effect of where everything is gonna go so you see how I did here the corners of the nose here I go up then this will be my eyes. And remember that when you look at a face, the first thing you're gonna notice that the eyebrows are a little further out than where the eye level is, which is the corner of the eye. 
So, I mean, you can use this technique. I mean, it's whatever you guys want to do or you want to do it, you know, pretty much like with the circle method. It's whatever you guys want to do, you know. It's always good to experiment all kinds of methods. Okay, so then we have the cheek line over here. Okay, so I'm going to now do the shape of the face. First, I'm going to start on one side first. So that way I know, you know, pretty much what I'm doing here. This may work, might be a little bit off, who knows. I just got to, um, you know what, let me try this again. For some reason, something this worked, but I don't know why it's not working now. So maybe I got to stop talking about the aliens. All right, let me do this first. So what I'm going to do, yeah. First, I'm going to do the, uh, yeah. Okay, I think that's what I did wrong. Yeah. One, two, three. Now I can concentrate with the, the, uh, the temple of the face. With where the eyes are going to be. Now I could concentrate with a box shape. So I'm going to do it lightly this time. Well, that's what I did before. So this will be the eyes. Let's see if this works now. I got carried away talking about the alien thing, the, the mystery of the second object they took down that our government would not let us know. I wonder why. So I got to stop talking about the... No, for some reason or something, I'm doing this wrong. Let me look at this. It's always good to analyze this good. I think I know what I did wrong. Okay. What I should have done was... Let me see if I can do this better now. This is the temple, right? Yeah, and sometimes you'll you'll definitely have some type of trouble trying to figure out where things go or how it's done. And nose here, the mouth, and the chin right here. So let's do the nose first. In the mouth. Let's make sure it looks like a nose. And we go up. That would be my eyes. Okay. And the cheek lines over here. Okay, now it's better. Now, I, and, uh, what happened was that I had to bring the side of the face a little closer. That's what I should have done. But it's no biggie. It's Everything has to do with practice, people. Trust me, until you get it right. Now it's looking way better. And then the eyebrows, of course, come out a little further out. This would be the shape. Right here's the hairline. So yeah, now it's 
looking better. So what we're doing here, we're, you know, we're pr not only practicing the technique and the, you know, the method, but we're actually experimenting, which is a better way, how we can do it better. Uh, we might do some changes with it, you know, um, that's how we work as an artist, trying to figure out um, how you can actually master the method and make it better. Let's fix this, yeah, fix this a little bit better. The ears will be here. This will be the shape of the hair. Yeah, now I understand it way better now. So yeah, um, okay, so let's pass this one. Now we're gonna actually do some Romero methods, which I actually enjoyed very much. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one first. And let me uh, analyze this first and, and let me explain it also. So what Romero did, he was explaining to one of his pupils in one of his videos that I saw, and it was in Spanish, um, that he starts off slicing off this side of the head here. And then after that, he slices this part of the head. Of course, he does this first, the cross first, and then, then he does this. I actually number them, every part. Then he does the ear line here. Then from there on, he does a hint of the jaw. And then that, and then he starts, um, for some reason or something, I don't know why, he started the nose here first. Then he started this eye over here. Um, I think maybe that's the way he wanted to do it, the way he... But um, like always, I'm always changing something, so don't be surprised. I might change something here. So let's sharpen our red pencil here because I don't like to work with um, flat pencils and I like to work with sharp pencils and what we're going to do is um, we're going to do the same process and like I said I might change something here let's see so we're going to start with the basic circle method This would be my eyebrow line. Then I'm going to visualize where the center of the face is going to be at. So it would be around here. So I'm going to make it a little bit darker so you can see pretty much where everything goes. Okay, so I'm going to do the cross, which is a vertical line straight down, right? And then visualize where the hairline might be. Visualize with the nose, and I'm doing this out of my head because I have no reference, okay? This would be what the chin is. So, now I'm going to visualize a slice portion part of the head here. And then another slice part, which is going to be the corner of the temple here. Which is going to be the side of the head, of course. And I'm not going to do it like an oval shape. I'm going to do it pretty much how he did it, sort of like a shortcut. So what he did, uh, Romero, was sort of like a shortcut. Mouth line here, the chin line here. So I'm going to visualize where the eye line is. And remember, the eye is going to be in the center of the line, okay? So always keep that in mind. Okay, now, man, my foot fell asleep. It's just, I'm actually sitting down with the, because this chair is very uncomfortable. Give me a minute, guys. Okay, I'm back. All right, okay, now, uh, I'm gonna start working with the ear line here now, just like he did. And then the jaw would be around here. I've gotta make sure that this is nice and level. But don't worry about it, I can always fix this. Don't worry, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. 
The main thing is to fix where the features are now. So I'm going to work with the nose now. Do the outline of the nose on this side. Do the ball shape right here. And then the corner of the nose. Okay. Then I'm going to bring it up. That would be my eye line right here. My eyes will fall right here. And then I got this done here. So I could, if I want, I could do the outline. But if I'm going to start doing the eye first, very lightly, and then work with the corner here. And let me see. La, 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 mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to work with the mouth and do the shape, that oval, you know, that actually helps form the shape of the mouth. It's sort of like if you were doing a line here, a curved line here, and then another curve line here but make sure it's three the you know three quarter view that when you're doing that curve line it's going to be less and you see it more over here that's going to actually help you shape the face even better all right so now i'm going to start adding more details with my black pencil and let's see how this works Let's see how this works. And I think I got more black pencil. I just gotta look for Hold on a second. Yeah, I got another one here. I gotta buy more too. All right. All right. I'm gonna work with uh, do the ears right here. Work with the nose. filter the mouth and since even though I have this it's always good to use the you know the grid sort of like a grid line for the mouth and remember that the mouth you always have to start the center of the mouth first in order to you know get things done right and we'll do the eye here Part of the bridge, yeah. All Just gotta figure out where things go. So this might work, you know, you just, you know, sometimes Romero's, um, the way he does these shortcuts, it's a little bit confusing. You just got to make it work. You know what I mean? Like what, right now, as I'm doing this, um, I'm trying to make it work. 
and uh, even though it is the Loomis method, um, and, 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 you know, the three-quarter view is not easy to do, trust me. Um, I like doing the front view first. Uh, you know, if anything, I, I like to draw, you know, front view faces um, better than the three-quarter view sometimes. But there are times that if I find myself that I'm getting good uh, doing a three-quarter view, then I stick with it, then, then I just keep doing the three-quarter view. With the three-quarter view, the problem with the three-quarter view is that you just got to remember that, you know, this side of the face, you're going to see less and this side, of the, you know, you're going to see more because, you know, it's actually perspective. Now, I'm not too happy the way this side of the face came out. Maybe I should have brought it a little bit closer, but that's the problem when you're doing these type, because I like this method that he did first that he started working with the nose first which i'm going to show you right now um but i guess if i fix it you know it might look better yeah i may just bring in the face a little bit and let's see what happens yeah that's what it is No, I'm still not happy with this um, technique. And like, like I said, it's always good to experiment something, but maybe um, I'm, what I could do is I could start all over again. So let's try this one, and then we'll go back to this one again. And then we'll end it. We'll do another one here. Let me see. There's another one here. Oh, yeah. There's uh, something that I saw by um, Ryan Benjamin that I want to ex you know, experiment with you guys. Um Maybe you guys might like that because he's more like comic book style. Um, Ryan Benjamin. <clears throat> okay, so here we have uh, the Loomis method, except that we're starting out with the nose first. And when we start with the nose first, we indicate the side of the face here first. Second, which I actually wrote it down here. Then after that, everything starts taking place. We start working with this side of the face here, this side of the face here. Of course, we do the mouth. And then this side, you know, the cheek line over here, and then the, the temple part of the head. So I started doing this one, and uh, it worked out pretty well. The problem is that, you know, when you're in a rush, um, especially doing a tutorial, because you want to go on, and uh, let's see how it works. Because... When I did this one, I took my time doing this. So, all right, so we'll start with a basic circle. And uh, here's the uh, eyebrow line. You visualize the, uh, where the uh, center of the face is. Those. The chin will be around here. So, um, I'm going to do a hint of the nose first. I just want to do like a sort of like a triangle shape. And then right here would be the eye line. I'll make it a little bit darker so you guys can see it a little bit more clear. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, of course, slice a little bit here. This goes in, right? Then a hint of, you know, the eye socket here. And then here's the cheek line here. And uh, I'm going to do the mouth line. Chin right there. So this might work better. I kind of like this one better because we start out with the nose first. This part of the bone structure. See how little by little it's getting formed. And here's the cheek line. And then I notice what he does is um, the other side, the bridge of the nose here. And uh, if I want, I can do a hint of the eye here. Sort of like scribble in the eye. Remember, there's nothing bad doing scribbling. 
there's nothing wrong with it. Then I'll be able to see my the tempo over here, see? So I think this is really better now. I, I think I like this one better because it actually gives it a better form and stuff. Because of course we started with the nose first and now let's do some details. Well, I'm not gonna do so much detail. There's so much stuff I wanna show you guys. And I might go back to the first one I kind of messed up on, so. And just, you know, add more, you know, outline to the face, but very lightly until you see the face start taking form. You're going to know you're actually going to program and you're going to train your eye to see the ear line and the jaw would be around here. Once you see this mouth here, you will actually see the jaw right here. You can actually visualize a line going this way, line this way, line that way. So everything starts taking shape. The artery over here, the neck. And we'll visualize the shape of the head back here. So yeah, it's coming out better. <laughs> then the ears will be around here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize the corner of the eye here. And the other eye over here. Then here's the nose. And do that so good. I'm going to fix that a little bit better. Fix that nose, fix that nose. Make your nose better. Let me do the, the filter of the nose and then, yeah, now it's better. And then right here, underneath the filter of the nose, you're going to see the plane of the center of the mouth. And here's the bottom of the lip right here. I gotta eat something, but I'm afraid to eat because of my health. Um, I don't know what to eat anymore. But I do have some salads and I'm just gonna drink uh, some water, more water, more than anything, and just stay away from these peanut butter that I bought. But peanut, the problem with this is healthy and everything, but it has too much sugar. And that's the problem with the peanut butter, you see? four grams of sugar and and they put a lot of uh, preservatives and they put a lot of uh you know processed foods not really good i think that's what's really making my my health really bad so i'm gonna see if i can maybe fast for a couple of days i know it's not going to be easy i don't like to starve but i guess i could live on water for like at least three days until I see my um, my symptoms go away. But I don't know about the... If you guys know anything about Metal Muso, just let me know. Maybe if you know anything that... Because it did help me out a little bit, Metal Muso. Um... Okay, so, so far that came out pretty good. See, the, I like this method better because um, it, the way it was done, how he started off with the nose, um, even though this one, I could always go back and fix it. And let me, let me see if I can do this on a different sort of way. Uh, let me see something. What I could do is I could do some changes with this. And it's always good to experiment, you know, it's always to experiment 
a method that you might think it's not coming out right, you know. So let's uh, use uh, another pencil here. And then we'll do another video after this. I just got to see because we took a long time on this video. So. Especially the topic of the second mysterious object that the United States actually decided to take down. I just hope it wasn't an alien or something or a UFO because maybe they come in peace, you never know. actually do do some type of scribbling or something let's see how it goes all right so um what i'm going to do is yeah i want to start the nose first that's what i'm going to do the nose so i'm going to do it like this but it's going to be a different approach I'm going to start the nose first, see how it works. And here's my mouth flying right there, and here's my chin. <clears throat> now, what I could do is I could start slicing off the head now. So I'm going to slice off here. Yeah, I think this actually works. Here's the nose, and I'm going to visualize that the eye is going to be here. So right here would be the other side. So what I did here is this, except that I didn't do, he didn't do the nose first. He started slicing, and this is Romero's method. But like always, I like to experiment and change a little bit something here. So I started the nose first, slice a bit here. Now I could visualize the ear line. Yeah, I think this is going to work out fine. Since I have the mouth line here, I'm going to visualize the jaw. Let me turn on the air conditioning because it's getting hot now. So, You know something, guys? I think that Metal Muso did something to me that it's helping me actually. Uh, because I not only I had to turn on the air conditioning, but I had to uh, do number one, which is uh, I had to pee. So, yeah, it did something. It actually is helping me a little bit uh, pee better. The Metal Muso, I got to look that up. It's always good to look up something that you're just not certain about. All right, going back to my, uh, my experiment I'm doing here. Uh, I already did the nose, and then I did this right here. Okay, so I'm not gonna explain myself again. You guys already know what I did here. <clears throat> so, 
I'm going to start working with the features, which are no details, just, you know, to a hint of pretty much how it's done. Yeah, I think this actually works out pretty good. And let me write, let me just do this uh, better here. Hold on. Let me do this better. That way I know what I'm doing next. You know what? I'll just do this segment again later on. That's what I'll do. Because I like to, once I discover something new, I like to actually take notes of it. Even though it's my idea, but I still like to, like to take notes of it. Or maybe I might do it here. Who knows? So, yeah, here's the nose and uh, cheek line here. Then another cheek line here. See? And then right here would be the eye. Okay. I'm going to leave this like that because so far this looks okay. But this is how you actually work this out. So, if anything, I started off with the circle, the construction lines, indicated the nose right there, then the chin. Then, after that, we'll start all over again here. Then I started with the nose. Then I'm going to use the orange. Then I started slicing off. And this is so cool that I'm going to actually post this. I started slicing here and then slicing over here. And then let's do this again. I'm going to do it right here better. The nose and the chin. And then I saw, wait a minute, hold on. I started the nose. And then I started slicing here, here, and then sliced over here. And I did the line for the ear line right there. It's sort of like a box shape, if anything. And you can actually picture this like a box shape. And then after that, I did the jaw. So yeah. This whole process here actually works. And uh, let's finish this a little bit so we could understand what we're doing here. This will be the side of the where the eyes are going to go at. And then we'll do a, sort of like a, a line for where the eye is going to be at right here. And then right here we'll do the eye right there. Just a hint of an eye. Nothing big. No, just a hint. That's it. Let me see something, something just not right here. No panic, no panic, no panic. What I should have done was, I should have did the eyes first. Right there. Like that. And then, and do, Fix this a little better. There you go. Okay. So yeah, that, that worked out pretty well. Okay, guys, that'll be it. I'll, we'll do another video. Wait, 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 hold on. I did promise you I was going to do Ryan Benjamin. Okay, so let's do Ryan Benjamin. Let's see if I did it. Let's see. Okay. We did this, we did that. Yeah. We're going to do Ryan Benjamin. 
and uh, we're on the other side. Okay, Ryan Benjamin, he doesn't use the Loomis method. He actually uses the... Um... Anyway, let's start again. Ryan Benjamin, he's a comic book artist. Okay, I know many of you already know who Ryan Benjamin is. He's, so, he's sort of like close to David Finch, kind of. Um, so he does not use the Loomis method, even though I'm pretty sure he studied the Loomis method. Like every comic book artist, you know, they, owe, they definitely study the Loomis method. But Ryan Benjamin, what he does is he starts, you know, the basic oval egg shape, kind of like this. And right here would be, you know, no, actually he does this, which is a vertical line. Well, that's be the center of the face. <clears throat> and then right here is the eyebrow line. So what Ryan Benjamin does, he starts the ear first, right? And then he does the eye over here. But I found it a little bit disturbing because I, you know, I couldn't figure out the proportions right. Uh, even though he did it right, I mean, his drawing came out pretty good. But I'm going to do it a little bit like the way he did it. But at the same time, I'm going to change. Like always, I'm always changing something. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to visualize the side of the face here. And let's see if we can... Um, Get this right. I'm going to visualize the size of, well, not the size of the face, the side of the head here. Then right here would be the eye. Okay. He did some type of triangle shape for the eye. Then the other eye, a little bit closer to the, of course, because it's a three quarter view, so this eye is going to be closer to the center where the three quarter view. So he started after doing that, when he did the ears and the eyes, he then he did the mouth. But I'm not going to do it that way because I'm, I'm actually going to, little by little, um, do it, you know. I'm going to train my eye to see where everything goes. You know, here's the eye and then the ear. I'm going to do the ear now. Then right here, I'm going to do the nose. See? Then right here, I'm going to do the mouth. Then right here, I'm going to bring this chin a little low, lower there. Now, when he did the video, he did the same process except a little bit backwards. He started the ears first and the eyes, but I did a little bit different. So I'm going to do pretty much what he did. He started working with, which is, uh, I'm going to see if we're going to do this a different color so you guys understand. Uh, hold on a second. find another color here that way you get to see the segments done differently oh okay here's the green all right so what he did was um he did the shape of the face right like that then the jaw, I'm not going to do the jaw yet. He actually did the jaw, but I'm not going to do it. The reason why is because I want to capture this first. First, I want to work with this. Let me get a darker color here. Hold on. I'm sorry, guys. It's just, I want to do this correctly. And I think I know what I'm doing wrong. Hold on. I got my color pencils here, different choices I have here. So, let me see, let me go on these. What color should I use? Because I'm already using orange, so I'm gonna use this color right here. with the side, the contour of his head. And like I said, I'm not gonna do this yet, even though I have the ear there, but I'm just gonna leave it like that, okay? I'll do some hint of the hair. Now I could visualize the cheek line right here, see? 
Then I could do the jaw now. See? Just like that. Now, I've seen a lot of videos by him that sometimes he'll just do the features and then he'll work with the outside. I mean, you could do it that way if you want. Um, but if you really want to find out where everything goes, the shape of the face and everything, you could do that first like I'm doing right now. Then he always starts with the eyes first, and that's what he says. I always start with the eyes first. I remember looking at his video. And here's the uh, eyebrows. And then that's when he does the nose. And right here's the mouth. So we're going to do this several ways. Let's see how, how it just, how it, you know, actually works. Let's see. So this is more like a more like a comic book style. Let's try this one again. Let's save this one. We'll do a different approach right now. Let me see. All right. We'll do a different approach. Right here would be where the eye is going to be in. And right here would be where the ears are going to be at. And the nose is going to be here. Okay. Now if I want, I can do the line here now. See? Let's see how this works now. So now what I could do is I'm going to do it a little bit different than what he does. I like to work with the nose first. So I want to work with the nose first. Then everything starts taking form better like that. There's the other eye here. And then here's the mouth. Okay. I'll do the eyebrows. I think that this is more better because you're working with the features first, and then after that, you can just round off. And you already have the segments done, so. Then let's do the. Um, Actually, I'm going to leave the ears for last. So what I want to do is I'm going to work with the shape of the head. See how it, little by little it's to do that triangle method to, for, to figure out the length of the mouth. All right there. And I can see already the jaw like that. It's whatever you guys want to try. If you want to do it the way he does it, or you could actually do it this way also, which I'm going to show you right now. Uh, let me see if I still have it here. I think I still have it here. Oh yeah, here it is. This is a great technique. This is something I saw on Google that you start off the eyes first and then you do the triangle method. You could do it that way. I mean, you know, you're going to notice that a whole bunch of techniques, they all look the same, um, kind of very similar in some way or form. Um, let's go back to this again. Hold on. I think it was this one. Oh, 
Okay, here it is. So let's do it the way I saw it on Google, which is sort of like um, the Norman Rockwell method, kind of, in a way. This would be the eye line, the center of the face, which is the vertical line. And then you're going to visualize the eye here, and you're going to visualize the other eye here. Okay, there's an eye here, and there's another eye here. Then you're going to visualize that V shape. Here's the eyebrow line and then the V shape. Then you're going to visualize the nose, the mouth, and the chin right there. See? I'm going to see, I'm going to go back because I know I took pictures of this technique and I think I posted it on Facebook. I'm not really sure uh, how this works. Um, but this is a different. <clears throat> a different uh, approach doing faces and then right here you'll see another cheek line here once you have this here you're going to actually see the cheek line there and then another cheek line there and, and then from there on you can do the shape if you want you could work with the features first let's see if we get the this correct Let's fix this a little better. And then little by little, you're going to see the ear line just about there. And you know who works like this a lot? Paul Abrams, because he, he likes Paul Abrams. He's also another comic book whiz. Um, look him up. He's really good. And I think I've um, shared some videos by him on Facebook. He's brilliant. He draws great poses of Spider-Man and and he draws some real cool faces too. Very comic book style. And he does, I notice in some of his techniques, he uses um, the Loomis method, but in a different sort of way. Every artist actually have their own way of doing their heads and faces. And the ears right here. Neck. The back of the neck. Wow, it's amazing. It's pretty quiet. That's because the people in the back, they're not here. Because they're very noisy sometimes. And it's amazing, the other people on the other side. Oh, my God, today's my day. And my brother's not here. I don't know where he's at. And, yeah, it's just, I might as well just take the opportunity. I'm going to see if I can do two more videos. Which I'm really impressed with today's. Yeah, today is great because um, even my symptoms went away because, man, this morning I was in so much pain. I had um, an ice, you know, those little uh, ice packs. Well, the, these are big ones. You actually fill the water in and just put it in the freezer. Yeah, I had to put that underneath me to at least soothe the pain because it's just terrible what I was going through. I guess the Metal Musil... And plus, I took Flowmax, the uh, 
the medication that I usually take. The only problem with that medication is it just um, makes you dizzy and it gives you all these strange like light effects in your vision. It's just crazy, man. Um, medication move actually does all kinds of shit to you. It's crazy. All right. Okay, so you have an idea how that's done. Okay, guys, we're going to end it now, and I'll probably do another uh, tutorial after this. Hopefully hopefully you guys um, practice this one. This actually works out. Uh, I think everything that I've shown you so far, and let me see what else I got to do here. Um, we did this. We got to do this one, um, and we got to do the, the expression, how to do a smile which I actually practice on this one. So you guys might like this one afterwards. So anyway, guys, good luck and keep practicing.